All righty. Today we have the fabulous Justin Elizabeth Sayer. How are you doing today? Doing well. How about you? I'm well. Thank you. So tell me, how excited are you for the Night of a Thousand Judies to be back for its 11th year? Oh, I'm thrilled. It's really become kind of a hallmark uh, uh, for me of kicking off Pride in a really fun way. And I get to see so many new and interesting performers, some old favorites. It, it really kind of begins Pride for me. Mm, definitely. So can you tell us a little bit more about this annual charity event and what attendees can ex expect this year? Well, we, as always, have a wonderful group of performers. Mm -hmm. uh, some Broadway talents and downtown performers. We kind of run the gamut because uh, Night of a Thousand Judies is always about kind of continuing the work of Judy Garland, mm -hmm. not just kind of doing a night of imitation. So you have new takes on some classics, some classic classic takes on some classics, but it's, it's a fun celebration of this performer that really shaped so many of us and really was a voice for so many underrepresented people during her lifetime and continues to be that. Mm -hmm. So it's it's a fun night. It's We've raised a lot of money for Ali, the Ali Forne Center, which houses homeless LGBT kids in New York and has sort of become the hallmark of how to how to uh, deal with and 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 help L homeless LGBT kids uh, across the country. And uh, and this is a this is a great pride event that is is a chance to give back directly to the community in a, in a fun and interesting way. Yeah, definitely. So as the writer and host, how did the idea for Night of a Thousand Judies initially come to fruition? Sure. Uh, well, um, I uh, it, it grew out of a show I did for a number of years called The Meeting, which we're bringing back this fall, okay. uh, which was the meeting of the International Order of Sodomites. Uh, and every month we would celebrate a different gay icon and uh, usually based on who was born that month. Judy Garland was born and and very sadly died in June and it's Pride Month. Mm -hmm. So it kind of always made sense that we would end our season with something celebrating the, the greatest of all gay icons. Mm -hmm. um, I also wanted, because that show was so much about community, I really wanted to make sure that even from the first year that we were giving back to the community in some way and and partnering with the Ali Fortney Center now for 11 years has really been a gift. Um, I think that, you know, uh, especially with all the, the recent legislation around gay children and trans children, um, we have to make space and, and really make sure that we're aiming our efforts at caring for young people. And I think the Ali Fortney Center really is impeccable in the work that LGBT kids in New York, and, and I'm very proud that we continue to do the show as long as we have. Yeah, for sure. So have you raised money for the Alley Fortnite Center since the beginning? Yes, absolutely. Okay. Since the very first year, we've always partnered with them, and, and they've been wonderful partners. They've loved the show. We've we've done it in different spaces and come home to Joe's Pub, so it's it's really been a remarkable journey and, and a hopefully one that continues for many years. Yeah, for sure. Now, you said that this year's event is especially important because the AFC is in the process of expanding their reach. Can you talk a little bit more about that? Yeah. Well, the, uh, the Alley Fournay Center is opening a new drop-off center and we're trying to raise money directly for that new okay. center. Um, I think, I think it's fair to say that, you know, there's a lot of displacement for LGBT kids in, in around the country. Mm -hmm. um, percent of, of young homeless people uh, identify as LGBTQ. So, so to have more resources, have more places for young people to go and get the help they need uh, is vitally, vitally important. And I, and I think with, with all the new legislation and all the new things that are kind of being passed around the country that threaten these young people, I, I can't imagine a world in which some of them wouldn't come to New York. And, and I'm sure we all know New York is a hard city. Yeah. So what a, what a wonderful opportunity to help those young people find their way in New York. And I, I think that's something that the, uh, the Alley Fournay Center does extremely, extremely well. Mm -hmm. So we're we're very focused on this new drop-in center. 
we're focused on helping them continue their work, but you know, the drop-off center is a big new component mm -hmm. because they, what, what I'm so committed about with them and what I continue to be so, so inspired by them is that they, it's never enough. Yeah. They want to, they want to make sure they have more beds. They want to make sure they have more outreach. They want to make sure they want to, that they have more drop-in centers so that, so that they can address a continual problem in this city. And I think they're doing it better than anybody else. Awesome. Very nice. Now, almost every LGBTQ person I know has some kind of personal relationship with Judy Garland. Do you mind sharing yours? Uh, sure. I, um, I, I think I saw a lot of the movies growing up. I, I kind of, uh, I was raised a lot by my grandmother's. And they were both Judy Garland fans. So I, I grew up watching those amazing movies. I kind of tended to be kind of a meet me in St. Louis, <laughs> you know, the Harvard girls. I wasn't, I saw The Wizard of Oz and loved it. But for me, it was those other kind of her big musical performances that I loved. And I think as a performer, she's informed so much of, of who I am and how I am with an audience. You know, the thing that I... I'm continually drawn to with Judy Garland is that she did it all for an audience. Mm -hmm. You know, she she experienced the feelings. She she told the truth of the song she was singing to to let you know that you weren't alone and to leave it all on the stage. And as a performer, I, there are very few. Garland. So for me, the personal connection always goes back to this. What are you giving to an audience? What are you doing for them? How are you expressing what they feel? How are you interacting with them, teaching them, taking them to a place they haven't been before? Mm -hmm. And and she's the hallmark for me on that level, deeply. Awesome. Mm -hmm. Definitely. Now, this year, there will be performances by many Broadway artists, including Julie Benko, Telly Leung, T. Oliver Reed, Samantha Williams, and Elizabeth Ward-Land. How do you select who to feature each year, and do they get to choose which numbers to do? Uh, we always try to, we we love to get people that have done it before. We love to have some old favorites back. But we always try to involve new folks, you know, uh, as I said earlier, the, the gift of this show is that we want it to be something that is unlike any Judy Garland concert you've gone to. We want people to come and, and do their take. Yeah. So we're always looking for new and interesting voices. And and we we do leave a lot of options open to them. You know, what songs do they know? What songs do they feel comfortable with? Um, because by now, after 11 years, one would hope we we know the rep as, as well as we do, we can often make suggestions like, oh, this might be a song we haven't had. This could be an option. Um, but, but we really want somebody to come in to the show with a song they feel passionate and a connection to. So a, a lot of that is up to the artists. And we, you know, in those in those moments where we can make suggestions, we do. But more so, we're looking for how are you embodying what Judy means to you? How are you bringing your slice of this legacy to, to the fruition? Mm -hmm. so, that's so that's how we really like to deal with it. Okay, awesome. So has there ever been any concern about repetitiveness or select songs being performed too much? Um, I, I think in every concert, we, we try to do the hits. You know, everybody wants to hear The Man That Got Away. Mm -hmm. We do a special thing at... at Judy's where everybody sings over the rainbow at the end of the show. Um, so so that's never up for <laughs> grabs. Um I think there are there are, you know, there there can be some things that that songs that come back year after year. But again, I think because our our concentration is on finding interesting people that are doing these songs in an interesting way it doesn't feel repetitive. It feels like, oh, now we're going to see what this person take is on Come Rain or Come Shine or, you know, any any of the rep. Mm -hmm. um, so, so it doesn't feel repetitive. It feels like it's always a new exposure to, a, to an old friend, if that mm -hmm. makes sense. Yeah, for sure, definitely. Now, will there be a live streamed option or is this an in-person only event? I believe there will be a live stream option where we'll be advertising how you can contribute. 
Okay. Um, but I think, but I would also uh, stress that, you know, the best way to see it is live. Yeah. I mean, just <laughs> it, it, always, it's, it's just an experience that can only be, you know, had really in person, but we will live stream it because I know people can't get into town and et cetera. And we do want to also have an outreach for people to contribute during the show. Okay. Because, you know, while the show is is our pride and joy and we love doing it, the, we're always trying to raise the most money for the for this very important cause. Yeah, definitely. For sure. And now, additionally, you also wrote a new show called Pride Anthems, which opened on May 24th in New York City and tour dates are, are going around the country through June 24th. What can you tell us about this production? Uh, pride Anthems is... Uh, a project that traces uh, the last 50 years of the fight for LGBT equality okay. and talk and uses the music of that time to really illustrate how far we've come and where we have left to go. Mm -hmm. So it has a remarkable cast this year, Natalie Joy Johnson, Kevin Smith Kirkwood, and John uh, Michael Reese, incredible singers. Brian Nash did all the arrangements and is a wonderful musical director. And it's really a celebration of LGBTQ uh, equality and, and our continual fight to be seen. It's a remarkable show. I was really proud of it. We go out. They've already started going out. And I, I think uh, Friday they do one of their first tour stops in Southampton, which is remarkable. I'm excited. And I'll go out and see that. Yeah. Um, but it, it's it's really a celebration. And it's it's done in partnership with Pride Live because they're opening <clears throat> as part of the celebration of opening the visitor center at the Stonewall mm. Memorial. Um, so there'll be... Uh, a new visitor center opening in June of 2024, right next to Stonewall, that kind of celebrates LGBTQ history right at the site. So it's a really remarkable thing, and I, I'm very proud to be a part of it. Yeah, that's awesome. Very nice. So what does pride mean to you? Uh, pride? Oh, <laughs> uh, I think pride is about... I think pride is about chain, shifting the paradigm. I think for a lot of gay people, a lot of queer people, we've been told that this this, this uh, thing that we've been blessed with, mm -hmm. this, this difference in how we love, how we interact with the world, for, for too long we've been told that that is wrong or against a, a certain kind of cultural norm. And I think what pride does is is really asks each of us to look at the blessing of being queer. And I really mean it as a blessing. Yeah, It's for me, I know personally, it's changed my perspective about the world. It's changed the, my perspective about how I understand family, mm -hmm. having a deep, deep and spiritual connection to people that are not my blood, but are my sisters and brothers and friends. Um, it's taught me so much about empathy and caring and it is it is something that I think as a young, very young person, I, I felt perhaps an enormous amount of shame about. But as an adult, I see just as one of the great gifts of my life. I'm, I'm so proud to be a queer person in the world. And I am so proud of of so many queer people mm -hmm. because I think we do amazing things. And I think we're. We are uh, nature's way of changing the paradigm, and I'm very happy to be part of that. Mm -hmm, definitely fantastic. So how can one find out more information and stay up to date with both Night of a Thousand Judies and Pride Anthems? Well, they can always uh, uh, check out my Instagram, Justin Elizabeth Sayer at Instagram, and follow uh, the International Order of Sodomites on Facebook. Mm -hmm. um, both will be listed there. Uh, Pride Anthems is also from IMG Artists and Pride Live. So you can follow Pride Live on Instagram is a, is a great way. And Night of a Thousand Judies, you know, there's lots of press happening about it because it's June 12th mm -hmm. at Joe's Pub, joespub.org for tickets. <laughs> I have to make a little plug, of course. Of course. And, uh, and, uh, and we'll be live streaming from the Joe's Pub platform. So that'll be if, if you can't make it to the show, there is an option to see the show. Okay, perfect. And is Instagram the best way to stay up to date with you? Absolutely. Okay, okay, perfect. 
All right, then before we wrap up, are there any other upcoming projects or anything else you'd like to mention or plug at this time? Not currently, but there's upcoming projects, but nothing to plug today. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> Sounds good. Perfect. <laughs>